Monday. <laughs> I'm Caitlin. I'm Ed. And that's Lala in the back. We're flying low and slow all over Wisco to collect our Fly Wisconsin passport stamps. With 125 airports to land at, you never know what we might see or who we might meet along the way. So strap in and come along with us on our adventures as we explore Wisconsin from the air. We are the Flying Stampede. Racing traffic, 7-4 with the Kilo taking off from way 1-4, departing to the uh, northwest precinct. Oh, it's nice and smooth today. Gosh, we got right up. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh my god, we're already in the air? <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, I love this airplane. Oh my gosh. I had a, sw had a swivel today with um, it being so beautiful. There's going to be a lot of traffic out, huh? Yep, absolutely. Great idea. Yes, today, officially Caitlin Day because my wonderful husband, Edward, has decided to take me to uh, fly me to my first winery. Never been flown to a winery before. That's so, a bougie shit. Right? <laughs> I feel very fanciful today. But we are going to Willersheim Winery, very popular winery in Wisconsin. Um, I like their I like their Chardonnay or their Sauvignon Blanc. I'm a white wine person. That is a red wine person. They also distill, right? So whiskey or bourbon? Uh, whiskey, uh, I think it's whiskey. Maybe they have bourbon and they also have rye. Okay. Which I'm more of a, a whiskey and rye, rye kind of guy. Rye guy. My guy. <laughs> so, and they also have what, an old fashioned cocktail that we'll be bringing home, a old fashioned mix. But... Yeah, they've got a old fashioned, a Wisconsin old fashioned in a can. In a can. Okay. So, so I'll be having their finest uh, vintage water while we're there. Sorry. And I may be more interesting on the way back than on the way here. <laughs> it's always more interesting when she has a little bit of wine in her. Just saying. So unfortunately, we're missing one member of the Flying Stampede today. I am heartbroken. We can't bring Lala but we just weren't sure. The winery itself has a dog-friendly section, but we weren't sure if our Uber or however we got to the winery would allow us to bring Lala with. And we didn't want to get there and have to scrap the whole plan if she wasn't allowed, so. Because God forbid we can't get alcohol. <laughs> no. <laughs> God forbid we can't get to our destination and our adventure. Um, but yeah, hopefully the next adventure will be with Lola and Dog Friendly 100%. But finding that courtesy car, using that courtesy car with the dog has just been a little bit of a challenge for us. So um, we'll make it work next time. Yep. Because I already miss her. <laughs> but I'll, you'll have to just um, Photoshop her in here. Yeah. That'll make little, me feel better. A little dog face back. Yeah, with her ear muffs on. So we will be getting a stamp today. Our handy dandy. So our stamp is located at the mailbox near the self-serve fuel. Call ahead to confirm availability. Call uh, ahead. Right? Well, I did call ahead. I talked to a guy there named Lynn. And he did, well, I didn't, guess I didn't ask him about the stamp. That's but the priority. I know. I kind of was more concerned about a, a car, courtesy car. Like a pretty straightforward airport. Yeah. With a windsock and a, oh man, what are those triangle things called? Uh, is it a tetrahedron? Yeah, tetrahedron. <laughs> those are the worst. <laughs> well, they have two windsocks, one on each end, and then they have that little tetrahedron guy. I, could, I know it sounds terrible, but I could never remember with the tetrahedron which way uh, points the, into the wind and which one <laughs> doesn't. I would agree with you there. 
I was, I feel like it's the opposite of the way that you think it would. Right. Because I think, I would think that the arrow would point to where the wind is coming from, but I actually think it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, I think you are correct on that. I, I don't remember. Yell at us in the comments if we're incorrect. <laughs> like, how are you a private pilot and you don't know this? Well, because I like the windsock. Yeah, windsock. Pro windsock here. Fight I, me. I feel like windsocks <laughs> are just... I mean, it makes sense. Sock Prairie traffic, 74 with the kilo on a 45 for 18 Sock Prairie. Sock Prairie, 74 with the kilo turning final, 18 Sock Prairie. Yeah, Sauk Prairie Airport is 91 nautical miles from Racine and is just northwest of Madison's airport. Winery is a quick eight minute drive from the airport or about an hour walk. The main attraction was the winery, but there's plenty of other fun things to do, including a sculpture park and trail, which we'll be sure to hit up on our next visit. There's a taxi service in town, though they do have strange hours but you can also get an Uber if there's one nearby. We're here. I mean, it's a Wollersheim distillery, winery, and bistro. Um, we've actually found a really nice man named Lynn, and uh, I actually talked to him yesterday because I was planning on coming here. I was wondering if there was courtesy cars, and he said that there wasn't courtesy cars, but he, that he would be able to drive us if we uh, were there when he was here, and thankfully he was... Here. The moment we landed, he was there for us. <laughs> thank you, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Lynn. I think it, I was telling Caitlin on the way over here, it's a testament to how amazing aviation is. Just everyone's willing to help each other out and to just be good stewards of aviation. So, so we made it to the winery. That's bottom line. So we're going to get some... Wine. Food. Bottom line. I'm going to get wine. some water. Sorry. <laughs> and some food. And uh, yeah, so... It's a okay. beautiful property so we'll definitely get some good footage and there's some pretty cool history here too 1840 was founded it sounds like we're kind of the original Napa here it sounds like in Wisconsin mm -hmm. so come on come hang out with us let's go a quick drive from Ooh, Sauk shade. Prairie Airport is Wollersheim Winery Agustin Harasthi acquired the land that the winery sits on in the early 1840s here he planted a vineyard from European vines that he brought with him the vines could not withstand the Wisconsin winters, so in 1849 he took his vines to California. Agustin was later known as the father of California viticulture. The property was later acquired by Peter Kell in 1856, and the winery was built shortly after in 1858 and ran until 1899. In 1972, the Wallersheims purchased the property and restored it into a working family winery. They brought in Philippe Cocard from the Beaujolais region of France to become the winemaker for the winery. Philippe, his wife Julie, and the Wollersheim family continued to make wine Cheers. and even spirits on the property. This is my kind of day. <laughs> We're starting off with lunch in the bistro. We had a rye cheese dip, some wraps. I've also heard that they have dessert, which are wine gummies and a old fashioned chocolate chip cookies. Um, we're gonna start with lunch and then I think we'll walk around a little bit, explore, and then hit back up for dessert. And then the distillery. But check out this beautiful place. And for the record, I'm drinking water. Wah, wah. It's a vintage 
Pure Life. Digitude. 2023 Pure Life. Mm -hmm. One of the best. At the winery, I enjoyed Rosé Wine, a Manhattan at the distillery, and my favorite was the Brandy Old Fashioned in a can. It was a great example of a real Wisconsin Old Fashioned. So, just got out of an Uber. <laughs> Caitlin's crazy. Told you, when she gets a little wine in her, her Old Fashions, you just never know what's gonna happen. So we're gonna grab our stamp, and we're gonna head back to Racine. Adventures don't always have to be to faraway places. Sometimes the best ones are right in your own backyard. And don't forget the cocktail. Keep on moving on. 